wise God, jealous and holy, your love brings us truth. Wise God, just and joyful, your stories bring us hope. Wise God, wakeful and surprising, your breath brings us life. Teach us truth, gladden our hearts, circle us with love. Trust us with justice, sweeten our days, circle us with love. Keep us holy, give light to our eyes, circle us with love. Welcome to our online worship this week in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we gather together and the season of Lent moves on, our glimpse of Jesus on the cross develops a little more as we understand a little more about the transformation that will take place at the cross and beyond. We began with an image, perhaps not immediately one which shows a cross, but I hope in that image of Jesus dancing, you saw an image of a cross in perhaps a different form. And we glimpse Jesus seeking to bring God's love in a different form into the world. My name is Patrick and I'm a minister in the Methodist Church in the north and the northwest of Bristol and into South Gloucestershire. Whether you're joining me from there or from further afield, the welcome to each of you is the same, most warmly in the name of Jesus. And as we gather, my prayer is that we will continue to deepen our understanding and personal experience of Jesus on the cross as we draw together in worship. Thanks as ever are due to those who've supported this service, not least the members of the Festival Choir at St Peter's in Pilning, whose hymn will conclude our worship. But also to Ross Sledge, a local preacher here in Bristol who worships at Potter's Wood over in the east of Bristol, who has provided some written devotions for us this week. And I encourage you as well as listening to this video to read through those devotions at some point in the days to come. And if you want to do that, there will be a link below the video to our church notices in which the reflections can be found. So let's continue together in our prayers. Let us pray. Holy God, we worship you. Lord of all time and space, as we come together in worship, we see the work of your hands revealed in the myriad of creation. We see your mark on all that is around us. We hear your voice throughout all the earth and feel your gracious touch. You refresh our souls with justice and truth. You bring joy into our hearts and inspire life and light through enduring and abiding presence. Holy God, I worship you. I open myself to you. Forgive my hidden faults. Help me to be all you ask of me. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. And thanks also to Mary Chandler, who reads for us now. The reading is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. Jesus goes to the temple. It was almost time for the Passover festival, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. There in the temple, he found men selling cattle, sheep and pigeons, and also the money changers sitting at their tables. So he made a whip from cords and drove all the animals out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He overturned the tables of the money changers and scattered their coins. And he ordered the men who sold the pigeons, take them out of here, stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that the scripture says, my devotion to your house, O God, burns in me like a fire. The Jewish authorities replied with the question, What miracle can you perform to show us that you have the right to do this? Jesus answered, Tear down this temple, and in three days I will build it again. 
Are you going to build it again in three days? they asked him. It has taken 46 years to build this temple. But the temple Jesus was speaking about was his body. So when he was raised from death, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and what Jesus had said. I was there the day Jesus walked into the temple. He just stood there at first, almost in disbelief. But then I saw it. I saw the fire growing in his eyes. I'd come from Galilee to the place where God said he'd meet us, the temple. Did it feel like a scam? Yeah. I'd never been able to afford a lamb for my sacrifice, so I had to settle for one of those overpriced pigeons. My wife had recently died in childbirth, leaving me with my young son, as was the custom. The other women of my family took over the care of that his mother would have given. And after seeing the pain rage in her body, the distress on her face, the blood hemorrhaging out all just a few months before, I still felt very unsafe in my feelings. But it didn't do to talk about them. It wasn't a thing I could talk to my friends about. But I needed to talk to someone, so I decided to go to Jerusalem for the Passover and see if I could find solace in the temple the place where God dwells. The city was absolutely packed. I was shoulder to shoulder in the narrow market streets around the temple. I was tired after days of traveling from Galilee to Jerusalem. So as I stood there that day in the temple, I wasn't sure whether I was hallucinating as I watched Jesus grab a whip and drive the traders out of the temple, pouring money on the ground. But there was more than that as I watched him. There was something in the expression on his face as he swung that whip. It was as if a viper was attacking. Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up, he shouted. Not three days, but it took me three years to work out what he meant by that. I guess I'm just a slow learner. For he wasn't talking about the building, the holy place, the temple, the place that heaven touched earth. The place where the dishonest traders had put their grimy fingerprints on God's glory, defiling everything intimate about worship. The day wasn't about destruction, though. It was about hope. Because now I saw God in Jesus, right in front of me, and so knowing God is all about Jesus. And now as I look back on that day, I remember what Jesus did and how he did it. He felt like he was changing things for the better, reminding us about the real meaning of Scripture, showing us how to live, showing us how things can be changed. Life continues to be brutal. I still wrestle with the memories of that day when my wife died, yet a new life was given to me. But I'm encouraged and hopeful in Jesus, in his actions, not just on that day, but on the day three years later when I got it, when once again I was in Jerusalem for the Passover, watching his death because right there at God's feet. I realise that being able to dwell in God's presence is not just about a place, nor is it measured in the size and beauty of the animal you can afford. It's simply about the love and grace offered by Jesus. Even in the face of brutality, even in the face of death. And that's how I make it through life. So Jesus meets a spectacle that stirred him to violent anger. He meets a spectacle in the very place where God was understood to dwell, where compassion was embodied, where justice was palpable, 
where worship was primary. In that very place, in that most holy season of Passover, God had been usurped by trading, by self-interest, by exploitation and commerce. As I record this reflection, as we meet in any number of places to worship, we have tangible evidence that the presence of God is not limited to a building or indeed to a particular place. For God has promised that the spirit of God lives within us. And so our anger, our passion, our enthusiasm to reveal the presence of God in ourselves, in our homes, in our neighbourhoods, in our communities, in our world, is there. So our anger. If we accept that God is everywhere, then where are the things that upset and anger us? Just to name but a few, if it's the homeless or the hungry, can we go further than the support we offer to the, the likes of night shelters and food banks and channel our frustration and anger about their existence to do something about their underlying need for them? If it's about those who are out of work on a long-term basis, alongside the work already in hand to establish a jobs training and enterprise hub in Shirehampton, can we build on that to understand and confront the reasons that chronic unemployment exists? Looking beyond the immediacy of our shores, indeed the immediacy of just those examples in our city, buried below the headlines most days is the continuing civil war in Yemen, supported by arms from Saudi Arabia, supplied by UK manufacturers. Shouldn't we be angry and unhappy about that? And I hope that we're all driven to take our own actions in response to the climate crisis. And there are many things I personally feel about the outcome of this week's budget, which bring me anger and show injustice in the world in the way that our political system is continuing to work. These and more, and I'm sure you have your own things that you're passionate yet angry about. These are the things which meet us, not in a particular place, but all the places we find ourselves in. These are the money changers in the temple for us, the things we are angry about before our eyes in the dwelling place of God for us. They might, and they might well be overwhelming, and we might seem foolhardy in even attempting to fix them. But fix them, or at least shout about them, we must. Paul writes in the first book of Corinthians to the early church there, challenging for them the philosophies which were prized so highly in that Greek culture. He begins, in one sense, as I have, by encouraging them to see that God is revealed and encounters in all places, in many different ways. So different, indeed, he suggests, that what God has done in all those places might even seem foolhardy and foolish. In 1 Corinthians 1 verse 25, he writes, For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. What he seems to be saying to me is that foolishness will bring us closer to the heart of God than even wisdom. Certainly what the world recognises as wisdom. He puts that down in the context of Corinth, to all that Greek culture valued. And instead of valuing that, he nails his colours to a completely absurd mast, the wooden cross of a criminal, or at least someone seen as a criminal. And he continues to suggest that it's foolishness to trust in weakness and defeat. Yet having said that, that is the road that Paul points to and which Christ calls us to. So as we feel insignificant about doing anything about the big problems of the world, 
it might seem foolish. It might feel as if we are insignificant, that we can't do a thing because we are weak or just one person, that we have no power, no status. But actually those are all the qualities that Christ showed on the cross. And through those qualities came more transformation than we can get our head round. And those are the qualities that allow the power and presence of God to be seen and to act in the world. So as we stand and gaze and perhaps are astounded at the things before us, let's see not the ways in which God's glory is being defiled. Important though acknowledging that is but let's seek ways for God's glory to be made known in radical action, leading to transformation for ourselves and for the world. Amen. And so let us pray and do join in with the response as you see fit. God of compassion, we offer thanks for your goodness and for your blessings seeking injustice we pray for those crying in despair for the continually hungry for those let down by the system for your guidance for those who hold authority your will be done on earth as in heaven Walking alongside, we pray for those enduring pain. With victims of violence. With people in dark places. Help us to show empathy and understanding. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Offering hands of blessing, we pray over those in pain, over relationships at breaking point, over those who weep in grief, asking for courage to bless our homes and communities with your love. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Strengthen us to be who we are in you and to show your light in all we do so that your will be done on earth as in heaven. We pray these and all our prayers in the name of Jesus who taught us when we pray to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And as we listen to or sing the words of our hymn, let's just understand and reflect on the transforming power of Jesus on the cross. I dance in the morning when the world was begun, and I dance in the moon and the stars and the sun.
his heart to dust with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone, but I am the dancer that still And we conclude with a prayer of blessing. We came together to worship God. We have read God's word. We have prayed and sung songs. Now we go into God's world to be God's people wherever we are called to go. Let us go in Christ's name. Amen.